pretty eventful year, I can tell you this. I, uh, I bought a flat, it's good news. I live in one of those areas that's sort of like quite pushy in some bits and quite scuzzy the next street, you know. I think a lot of Britain is like this, quite integrated. It's the sort of place where if you see a white tent on the side of the road, you're not quite sure if it's a crime scene or a farmer's market. <laughs> I bought this flat and uh, my estate agent used the best sales technique anyone has ever used on me. We went on loads of different properties, some really nice, some not so nice. We went to this one place, it absolutely stunk of piss. And there was an iron mark in the middle of the carpet. And I turned to my estate agent and I said, wow, this place is a shithole. And without missing a beat, he said, yeah, but it could be your shithole. <laughs> and I bought it. <laughs> I love it though, people have an amazing attitude to life where I live. Like, I was on the bus the other day, this really old woman got on, it's completely packed. And she went straight up to this guy who was sitting down and said, how old are you? And this guy was like, uh, 37. She said, I'm 84, get up. <laughs> Shit, she just invented human top trumps. <laughs> he should have played about with a trump he knew he could win. Something like, yeah, Grandma, how many of your close friends are still alive? <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> so I've had an eventful year, as I said, I bought my flat. I broke my arm. I smashed my arm to bits. I've got a metal elbow. Check that out. Look at that. Come on, come closer. Come closer. Look at that. Look at that. Touch it. Go on. Touch it. Lick it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I, uh, I broke my arm, right? And um, I, I couldn't do loads of stuff because I only had one arm for six weeks. And it turns out there's loads of stuff you rely on having two arms, obviously. And my brother used to come round and check on me every day to see if I was all right when I was recovering. And one day he came round the first day and he said, is there anything I can do for you? And I was like, yeah, this is a bit embarrassing, but I'm finding it really hard to tear off loo roll. It's really difficult to tear off loo roll with one arm. Because you don't realise it, but you use that arm to look. Otherwise, you're just like... <sighs> <laughs> Honestly, my bathroom floor was like an unravelled mummy. <laughs> so I said to my brother, um, could you tear me off some loo roll? That would be really helpful. And my brother said, sure, yeah, no problem. Um, uh, how much do you need? <laughs> and I suddenly panicked. And I realised I've never spoken out loud with anyone else about how much loo roll I use. I would bet my bottom dollar that no one in this audience has ever spoken to anyone else. Like, I honestly don't know if what I do is normal. It's not like on the side of loo rolls there are serving suggestions. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do, I absolutely panicked. And I sort of thought, I've got to stay calm. So I turned to my brother and I said, I don't know, just uh, tear me off however much you think I need. And I saw my brother go through exactly the same thought processes. And we both stood there for what felt like ages in complete silence. And then my brother broke the silence by saying the only thing he could think of, which was, uh, well, what have you eaten today? <laughs> the next day he came back with a box of Kleenex and we never spoke of it again. <laughs> anyway, I've been Ollie Walsh. Thank you so much. Good night.